Hi everybody, it's Christina Mascari from Pretty Distressed. In today's video, I'm gonna be doing another Ikea hack. This time, I'm gonna take the Ivar cabinet, add some feet to it, flute the doors, and make it into a bar cabinet, coffee bar cabinet. It's gonna be really cool. So if you wanna see this hack, just keep watching. For today's Ikea hack, I'm gonna be using the Ivar cabinet. Now, this is a system that you can, they have a bunch of frames and other things for, but I had an idea to turn this into a little bar situation or a little media cabinet. Um, while I was putting this together, I decided to go ahead and put some paper, wallpaper on the back that I had just to give it a little bit of interest because otherwise it was gonna be very boring. And this is what it looked like assembled. This one was pretty easy to put together. The hardest part is getting the doors to hang right, but the hinges are adjustable so you can move those up and down to get it to hang evenly. Now that I know everything's in working order, I'm going to remove the doors because I'm gonna be adding some decorative trim to these and I'm gonna stain this whole thing. The doors are really easy to take off. It's just one screw and you can pull them off. Let's take a quick break so I can share about today's sponsor and one of my favorite partners, ButcherBox. You guys have seen me use ButcherBox for a while. They deliver meat directly to my doorstep and it's really high quality meat. 100% grass fed beef, free range organic chicken, pork raised crepe free and wild caught seafood. And it's all sourced from farmers and fishers who meet the highest standards for quality. You get to choose your delivery frequency to fit your needs and you can cancel at any time with no penalty. They have five box options to choose from. And this time I went with the pork and beef option, which is gonna be perfect for our smoker this summer. And now is the time to join for new members because you're gonna receive free bacon for life. Yes, a free bacon, which means you're going to get a free package of their uncured, no sugar added bacon in every regular box order for the life of your membership, you guys. And this bacon is definitely one of my favorites. We eat this up every time it's in our box. Don't miss out on this great deal. Sign up for ButcherBox today. To stain my cabinet, I'm gonna be using the Lily Moon Paint Old Smoky Gel Stains in the color Old Fashioned. This is a dark, warm brown. And I'm starting with a slip coat of water to help with the open time of this stain. This stain is a water-based stain, and I'm gonna apply it with an applicator pad. I really love using water-based stains because they're a lot safer, they don't smell, and they dry really quickly, so I'm not having to wait hours and hours for a stain to dry to move on with my project. And you're not gonna have all those yucky fumes and you don't have to worry about your rags catching fire and having those dry out. And I even have my garage doors closed right now and my air conditioner pumping in there because it is so hot this week. I'm sure it's really hot where you are. I think all of the country is under heat advisory. So those are the many, many reasons that I love working with water-based stains. And I think I can just get more of an even finish. Sometimes with oil-based stains, they don't absorb into the wood, especially around the knots. And with a water-based stain, it's kind of more of like a paint consistency. So you can really cover those up and get some really good coverage. This stain also has a top coat built into it. If you want a little bit more protection, you can always put a top coat on top of this, but I love that it has a little bit of protection built in as well. This only takes 20 to 30 minutes to dry. So while everything is drying, I'm gonna work on my trim pieces. I got this tiny trim from the Home Depot. It's about 268 a stick, but it is four feet long. I'm setting up my miter saw stand to cut this trim into two feet increments. It's four feet long, so I'm cutting it in half and I can actually set this stand to cut the same length every time. So it saves a lot of time. I can just take each piece and do the cuts over and over again without having to measure each time.
Okay, this was honestly the longest part of the entire makeover. So I have enough sticks to cover the front of the doors. You're gonna see the cool pattern that I ended up coming up with, but I had to individually stain each one of these trim pieces and I had to make sure that it was nice and even and get all three sides and the ends too, since all of that is gonna be exposed. But it was definitely worth staining these before I attached them to my piece because I just think it would give me an even finish. So it, it was a lot easier definitely staining these before I put them on. I'm gonna do this staggered pattern all the way across the doors. I used my level to put the first one on and then I'm using a scrap piece of that trim for my spacer. I'm using my Ryobi 18 gauge brad nailer to attach these to the door and I'm using a really small brad nail so that they don't go through the door. This thing is definitely becoming one of my new favorite tools. I've used it on, I think my last three makeovers. It's so easy to use and you don't have to worry about having like the hose and the big air compressor and it has adjustments on it so you can sink the holes a little bit. And this is their new design. So it's really easy to handle and it's even smaller than previous models. I'm using that spacer to make this look nice and neat and keep the same distance between each piece of trim. And I'm kind of keeping the nails in the same area too, just so it gives a uniform look. I am not gonna fill these because I think it looks pretty good without filling it. And I didn't wanna risk like having the stain look different than the wood. I started the first piece on each door with the level and then I just used the spacer after that. My original idea was to flute these all the way across and even on the sides with the trim piece going all the way from the top of the drawer to the bottom but the price of this trim has gone up since the last time I used it by over a dollar it's two dollars and 68 cents for four feet of this so that was going to be like 150 dollars for the whole cabinet and I just couldn't do it I wanted to do a more cost effective way so just fluting the front of the doors and having this staggering pattern saved me a bunch of money it only cost 37 dollars for all this trim I used versus 150 dollars I'm adding some feet to this to raise it up to counter height because I kind of picture this being used as a bar or a coffee bar and you could be able to make drinks or coffee on top of it. So I'm just measuring where I want the feet and then I'm gonna mark some holes so I can drill some pilot holes before I screw these in. So I bought these feet before I realized that the bottom of this cabinet is not completely flush and level. So I'm gonna have to add some washers to level out my foot. In hindsight, I probably would have just ordered different feet. So if you're thinking of doing a project like this, I wouldn't recommend these feet on here, but this is what I had and we needed to get the project done. So I made it work with these washers. I also had to use different screws than the ones that came with these foot. They were gonna be too long and poke through the bottom of the cabinet. So I just grabbed some screws that were three fourths of an inch to put in here. To finish this off, I'm gonna stain the inside of my cabinet. If you know what color you're gonna do um, when you're starting this project, definitely paint or stain these panels before you put this together. This cabinet comes with two shelves. I ended up putting one in and liking the way that that looked because again, if you're gonna use it as a bar, you might have some taller wine bottles and stuff that you wanna store in there. So I didn't think that the two shelves looked good, but know that you have the option to put two shelves in here if you want to. Okay, last step, I'm gonna put my cabinet doors back on and make sure that they're nice and level. I originally thought I was gonna add some gold hardware to the front of this, but the cabinet doors actually have a built-in handle on them, so they're easy to open. And I love the way it looks, so I decided to leave the hardware off. This IKEA hack is complete. Here's the basic Ivar cabinet that I started off with, and here it is now. I love this, and I think you could use it in a bunch of different ways. You could use it as a bar, a wine bar, a coffee bar, or even like in your entryway. I love the interest and the texture it has with the trim. And surprisingly, it was really easy to put this trim on. I love the pop of the wallpaper on the back. Quick safety note, this 100% needs to be anchored to the wall. They have holes that you can do that with really easily on the back. It's very front heavy, really skinny, so it definitely needs to be anchored. Thanks for joining me for today's project. My all in on this Ikea hack was a little under $200. It's a little bit expensive for a hack, I think but all the material costs are going up. Even this cabinet went up $15 since I bought it in February. So 
hang in there guys, it's a little rough right now, um, but still a great savings compared to my inspiration pieces, which all are around $1,000. So I think it's a great hack if you're looking for a bar cabinet or a coffee bar like this. So I hope you try it out. If you do, let me know down in the comments. I will be back soon with another project. Thanks for being here, you guys, and I will see you next time.